Hi guys, welcome back to News of Extra. I'm sure you had an interesting session with the sports analysis with Brenda Shima and Chuku Ike Chuku. Ah, road to 2023 election. We've had a barrage of promises from several candidates on how they are going to make the policy better, the economy better. Some have even promised land on water, AC on the roads, and, um, you know, uh, carpets everywhere. They've promised a lot, and they've even, you know, boasted of their track records. Okay, so we'll be talking about getting the right leadership, and I am not alone today. Of course, I have the national chairman of NNPP, that is Professor Rufai Alkali. You're welcome. Very good morning to you, Prof. Thank, Thank you very you much. Good morning. On the show this yes, morning. it's great to meet you as well. Yes, I hope uh, that you are not um, bothered about the Amatan. No, uh, it's a cycle. Uh, so it's, this is one of the seasons we have to pass through. We have passed through the rainy season. We are going to pass through this, and then it's, it's always good to have a change of season. All right, you mm. sound ready. But now the season is season of politics. Oh, okay, <laughs> yes. Now talking about <laughs> politics. Mm. Recently, we have had several candidates come out to tell us, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn Nigeria around. I'm going to make this and this happen. You know, it's just uh, more like, you know, how the husband, I'm going to put how the men tell the women, <laughs> if I marry you, um, there's, a, there's this Yoruba adage that says, our house is so sweet, it's the man that washes clothes, it's the man that do, does the show. And then when you now enter, you now find out that it's a different ball game. So how <laughs> can we decipher? <laughs> how can we tell that this, how can we as citizens, you know, decipher and be able to, you know, choose the right leaders? Well, thank you ma very much. Well, I will not make reference to the woman-man issue for now. Mm. But I would say that one, uh, why people always talk about democracy is that Democracy gives people opportunity, mm. in this, at least in this uh, ideal form, mm. opportunity to make choices, mm. to decide who should re uh, rule them yeah. or who should lead them. Mm. So it has been like this, although now we are uh, at this stage of our development, but the struggle for democracy has been on for many, many centuries. Mm. So it's not something that has happened overnight. Even the issue of the franchise, who should vote, who should not vote, has been a battle for a long time. Yeah. And uh, one of the things about Nigerians is that we also believe, and rightly too, mm. that we should be governed by people who know what they should do for us. Sure. And uh, uh, you can see in the history of Nigeria, I believe, even during the colonial rule, many Nigerians rose against them saying that no, you cannot continue uh, ruling us mm. uh, yeah, under obnoxious laws while well, you yourself, you are claiming you are democrats, you are talking about freedom, you are talking about liberty, you are talking about equality. So the struggle for democracy has been on for a long time. It's going to continue a continuous process. And uh, it's not going to be a finished product. It's not the day you can go on a shelf in the market, supermarket, and go and pick a product called democracy, no. It is a series of action, interaction, processes, and goals. So at every stage, you know, there are challenges and so on. So in the Nigerian context, we have also have been struggling, especially since independence. We have had several, several uh, uh, attempts, and uh, most of them have not been able to uh, be sustainable. Fortunately now, let's say since 1999, we have run uh, democratic government in the country with series of transitions. So uh, we are getting more knowledgeable and uh, we more clearer. Uh, but because Nigerians, as I always say, are always in a hurry, and rightly too, we always don't compare ourselves with those who are down below us because that's not the best way to move. We always compare ourselves with those who are, we see as models, whether they are within the African country, continent or outside. So we aspire to be the leader, uh, not, uh, not to be, to, and then to be used as an example of uh, popular democracy on the continent. So the challenges are very huge. Now we are in this transition. As you rightly observed, the general now are looking forward. Who do we now vote for? And uh, 
there is a great disappointment. Mm. You are absolutely right. You see people coming out, either before campaign or during campaign, or even during elections. They'll come and make all kind of funny promises. People you think you trust, people mm. who you think have pedigree, people who you think have, you believe in, people you think that know. Mm. But by the time they take over and they use something, people keep on wondering what is happening, mm. putting their head on their heads, hands on their heads, saying that, wha what went wrong? And that's why we are still moving in cycles. Mm. That's why we say that, unfortunately, that Nigeria is like a barber's chair. We are making moving, but we are not making any significant mm. progress. Yes, we are making uh, mm. slow progress, mm. but uh, we need to have a, 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 a grand leap, leap forward, not just to be like toddlers in the democratic uh, uh, journey. So uh, in the today, just in the next, uh, let's say, 90 days, uh, well, uh, 89 days, mm. uh, Nigeria will finally go to the ballot and choose a president. And why there's a lot of emphasis on the president in this country, even though there are governors, there are issues of senators, there are House of Representatives, House of Assembly, the president is the leader of the Nigeria. Right. And he governs the entire uh, country. Therefore, whatever he says, hmm. whatever he does, whatever he does not say, whatever he has not done, will affect everybody one way or the other. Mm. Therefore, Nigerians have the right to interrogate anybody who calls for to say they're well, going to lead them. Anybody. And uh, so far, we have uh, 18 political parties. And everybody has come up with his own brand of uh, presidential candidates. And uh, we in New Nigeria People's Party, we are very glad, we are very happy, we are very proud that we have a candidate in the person of Senator Ravi Musa Konkoso, uh, who is our presidential candidate. And uh, we are very happy with what he has been doing. And I'm sure Nigerians are also happy with what he's doing. Okay, all right. That now takes me to track records. We have 18 political parties. And um, I've been privileged to speak to some of the candidates. <coughs> I've spoken with candidates who have not been in the political sphere at all. They've not been in the political sphere. And then there are some that can boast of track records. Do you think that track records, that experience in the public space, even though um, some people may say they've not really done well, do you think that experience counts in this race of leadership? I think when you are uh, running a, for leadership, whether at the world level, mm -hmm. whether at the local government chairman, or senator, house of representative, or governor, and certainly for a president, especially in the case of the president of Nigeria, people must know who you are and what you are and what you stand for. In fact, this is the fundamental question. Mm. And that what we are having here is that so far, I'm very sorry to put it this way, there is deficit in the character of a number of presidential candidates. Mm. Because there's a popular language in Nigeria. Yes. They said, we don't want people of questionable character. Mm. Just questionable. Not to even to say whether they have been confirmed to be guilty of this or that. No. The fact that they have questionable character itself is a disincentive and is enough to disqualify anybody. Anybody who's going to go and uh, uh, apply for a job, is going to do an interview, the first thing they will ask is, what are your records? Where did you pay a primary school? Where did you a secondary school? Where did you a university? Where did you a NYC? Where did you start a work? Where, do, where did you start working? What is your career progression? These are essential issues. And then, if in the, bit, in the middle, <coughs> Along the line, they also will ask, well, are you involved in secret cultis, cultism? Are you in, uh, in drug activities? Are you in doing anything? It's a human sacrifice. Anything can add up. True. So first and foremost, the person himself, is a Nigerian president, I've said it recently, and I'm going to repeat it today, is that he's not a Nigerian president alone. He is a president that will lead Africa mm. out of where we are today. When the Nigerian president goes to the United Nations, we want to see him be received by world leaders mm -hmm. with a lot of confidence, with a lot of respect, you know, that this is a man who knows his own years. So this basic background is number one. Then the second thing that you have just mentioned, the issue of what is pedigree. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, it's basically assuming that everybody who is a contestant for president may have basic thing like a, a certificate, a diploma, or a degree, or whatever, okay, fine. Then if you have been involved in politics, let's say for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 30 years, what have you done? Mm. What have you achieved? Yes, as a professional, 
whether as a civil servant or as a later politician or as a serving politician, what have you done? Now, in the case of Senator Abi Musa Konko, so we are very clear mm. and uh, we are very proud to say it and we have said it everywhere. And this is the book I've come with. It. This is um, this is the, our vision. <laughs> we, we may not want to delve no, into no, But you may not want to. <laughs> but you ask the question, I'm giving you yes. the answer. So what is happening there is that first, this is a man who was in a, a, an engineer. Mm. He worked as a civil servant for 17 years and they resi resigned. And many civil servants will want to stay in civil service and work for 35 years and retire into the comfort of their homes and watching television criticizing government. He decided to opt out to, to go into the system yes, right away. I, I may have to interject now. Yes. But you know, a lot of leaders, uh, a lot of um, candidates mm. also have, you know, things to brag about. So that is actually why the citizens are in a fix of who to, okay, this person has this track record, this other that person has this track record. They all have one track record. But you know that um, when you're talking about integrity and track record, that was what brought in, that was part of what brought in this present administration. And at the end of the day, Nigerians are now... <laughs> well, you ask a question. Yes. And uh, I, I thought I, I, if I don't answer it, yes. our viewers will not be understanding the, the question. Yes. Mm. But so but what you're saying... want to dwell on no, one no, 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 no. We mm. are. We are. <laughs> I, I'm a salesman for my president. Yes. So um, I will not be a salesman for everybody. Of course. So uh, we're just talking about leadership as the yes. blanket. Uh, well, then yeah. you want to talk to me, you want me, you want me to speak as a political scientist, not as a chairman of NMPB in that case. <laughs> now, I will go back to the general, All but right. let's be too specific. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes. So what I'm saying is that he was a, mem a member of the National Assembly, mm. when he even served as a deputy speaker. Now, later on, he became a governor of uh, Kano State twice. Later on, he became a minister. Later on, he became a senator. So, w uh, so what is happening is that you can see in all the levers of power, mm. once you are involved, First, at the legislature of the legislative uh, a, a assembly, mm. the, he was a, a, he was at the national assembly, which means at the lower le, uh, house of representatives. Yeah. So he should know the character. He does know the character and the workings of national assembly, both at the house of representatives and then the senate being a senator. He also knows the working of a federal executive council. He knows what the role of a president and a minister and advisors can be. And then he was also a governor. So he knows the working of governors at a very level, especially being a governor of one of the most populous and very complex state like Kano State. So somebody with this background, it means that he can has the capacity and ability to work with the National Assembly easily, to work with the, his cabinet easily at the Federal Executive Council when he becomes the president, to work with the governors at every level. So which means what Nigerians is somebody who is, is a networker somebody who can work with everybody at any time and uh, bring those vast experiences of uh, his leadership as administrator, as a legislator, as a, 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 at every level so that you can just push the country because in 2023, you are not going for, to wait for six months, for three months, for two months to start moving. Yeah. It is hitting the ground and running. running or for because we have to now. recover all this lost time. Mm. Because Nigeria will not be wait, uh, waiting for another six months before you begin to see, uh, uh, talk about the end of uh, insecurity in this country. We do not want to wait for another six months or ten, one month, one year before they can see the end of the kind of skyrocketing prices of this country. People are, are shocked up now, are, cho are shocked. Yeah. I don't know whether you are not, you don't look like that. Uh -huh. But me, I am. <laughs> <laughs> everybody, so so people have to, anything. people are just tired mm -hmm. because what I have said recently, and I want to repeat myself again, is that there is a, what, what you call, inverse relationship. There is the price of labor and the price of commodities. Mm. The price of goods and services is moving very fast, but the price of labor is being depressed, largely because of the, the, the depreciating value of the Naira. Therefore, we assume even the worker himself who earns a regular salary, by the time he earns it, going to go to the market, is no more, cannot buy him half of what he bought last month. Yeah. That is the person who has a job. One of the person who does not have a job. So everybody is choked up. Now the kind of, uh, you know, the situation where Nigeria do not trust each other. You know, people only who have sit down and talk to each other and laugh, everybody now is, uh, you know, priming every other person in the form of a religious, ethnic, or, you know, you know, this is so, 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 so retrogressive. Mm. So we have to recover our country. Okay. You know, if farmers cannot travel to the farm, 
eh, tribal territories cannot go into the market. You know, there's no question of leisure. Mm. You know, even ordinary business people are running uh, helter skelter looking for. So the entire country is a state of flux. So somebody has to come in very fast, not to be grandstanding and dancing. I know this, I know. People, because there are people who are well, fash uh, fashionable with statistics. Mm. And it's good. So this is good. Mm. Because it has a way of to carry people. But what we call it, we call it empiricism. Mm. And that empiricism is that it will tell you something that may appear logical. But it's not logical. Yes. Okay? Because if you say that you're talking of... Uh, uh, the GDP in Nigeria, the life expenses in Nigeria, the reality on the ground is that it does not reflect all those figures we are talking about. Mm. So beyond those figures, yes. eh, the quantitative elements, mm. it is the qualitative uh, element of life that matter in this country. All right. So in effect, what we are talking about, Nigeria has opportunity today to go for a reset. Mm. And that it is going to be done because if we make a mistake in 2023, then nobody should sit down and complain again. Mm. Because in the past, we say we never had options. The new Nigeria People's Party now is offering an option. Well, okay. So now you are for experience and track record. Absolutely, yes. All right. And now, credibility and integrity. Okay. All right. So we go to debates, the big one. Debates. In other clients, developed and undeveloped clients, we see debates from, you know, the various presidential candidates, even, um, you know, governorship candidates, stand before people irrespective of who they are and you know to pitch and to you know tell give people their manifestos and their words and everything but we see now that debate is being debate is being dodged like uh, you know like bullets is it uh, <laughs> would would you uh, i don't know how i'm going to put it would it be tied to the buyers of the debate the organizers or do you think that debate is a way or a yardstick to measure what good leaders can offer well, two ways to look at it. First and foremost, I'm very happy. To, uh, I'm pleased to tell our viewers and Nigerians as a whole that uh, since the season of this campaign started, uh, our candidate, Central Abhi Musa Konkoso, has never shied away from appearing at any event, whether big or small, in Abuja or in Lagos or anywhere. Wherever he's invited, first, it is a privilege to be invited. That's the, our own uh, mindset. And that once you are invited, it means that they consider you an actor and a factor in the Nigerian politics. So then it means out of respect for even the organizer, whether they are, uh, they are a non-group or they are a highly non-group, it is out of your respect that you will also go out and uh, listen to them. And then they will give, the, they give you the opportunity to, to talk. Secondly, even out of respect of Nigerians who may be hearing about this uh, program coming up, they will, ask, they will be a bit disappointed with uh, people do not go there. And, uh, and then also it offers opportunity to express yourself and explain yourself. But there are other issues involved. You see, we are into politics. Sometimes when in the past, people walk into any debate just like that, mm. you know? But now, have you seen that uh, there are people who are just desperate for power? Anyhow, anyhow, mm. that this is their turn. This is my turn politics. Uh, this is why we are today. This is my turn politics. So. They want to use, uh, while the organizers may mean well, and they may be objective and rational and scientific, and uh, object behind the scene, some people will be working out to take advantage of this apparently neutral platform. Mm. So to manipulate it and gain some mm. mileage. Mm. So once a candidate realizes that there is something working behind the scene mm. and is not comfortable, Yes, of course, he has the reason he can, he can opt out. But there are also others who also really are afraid of coming out. Mm. You know? Why? Because either uh, they are not sure of themselves, or because they know there are certain questions Nigeria may ask. Because now, what is happening in most of these uh, uh, platforms, these uh, debate uh, platforms, mm. it's not like before when they were flat. It's just between the interviewer and then the, listener, uh, the interviewee. No, now it's engaging. And it's online. Yeah. Therefore, even if the person now organizing this uh, event may not like to ask some questions, some people can be ask some questions. Yeah. So if somebody has a terrible record somewhere and he's been hiding it, it will come out. Mm. It will not like it to come out. So I think some people are just running away from reality. Mm. But normally, a leader is always under exa examination. Whether he goes to any uh, debate or not, mm. 
whatever he does or whatever he has done over the past is public record. Yes. And people are used to scrutinizing it. In fact, one of the new novel, uh, novelty ideas that have been novel ideas been brought into this debate recently uh, is that they are even come up with what they call fast check. So that if you come with very yeah. bogus statistics and you want to bamboozle people and confuse people, somebody says, sir, this is not true. And then you begin to say, um, 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 then what did you say in the first place? So the first, I think Nigerians are getting sophisticated. And it's good for us. Mm. Although we are under pressure, still we are in charge of our faculties. Yeah. We are under a lot of pressure. I don't, I think not because of this poverty, you know, the, the disorientation of the whole system. We would have been doing much better. But even with this, Nigerians are holding their head very high. Therefore, that's why we, in the New Nigerian People's Party, we say we are going to talk about issues. You hardly see us eh? just attacking individual leaders on their own. We have no case because they themselves they are quarreling among themselves. Of course, what we have seen in the case of PDP and APC, uh, recently I mentioned something like they are engaged in a, what you call mutual assured destruction. Huh. They are obs yeah? <laughs> okay, we wouldn't want to delve on that. Okay, lastly, let's yeah? take this lastly. <laughs> youth, women and youth in Nigerian politics, not even just the lower politics. Out of these um, 18 presidential candidates, I understand we have like a woman who is seen and not really, really known like that. And then um, the youths too are not really that visible. The major contenders, of course, we cannot, um, you know, uh, shy from the fact that we have very, very major contenders in this politics. And um, what do you see that's concerning youth and women inclusion in the, the uh, level of politics in this country? I think you are right. The issue of women and the youth are things that we take very seriously. In fact, we are not patronizing them. No, it's not. Indeed, both uh, from the records of uh, our census over the years have shown that almost more than half of the populations are women and then also over the uh, almost half of uh, the voting power are uh, women. And the women also have more fidelity. If they want to do something, they will do it. If they will not, don't, don't do it, they will not do it. Therefore, they are open. They are very clear. They are transparent. So therefore, uh, also they are also the most vulnerable group because most of them are not exposed to modern education. Those who are educated, they will hardly get a decent job. When you have a decent job, you have to contend with family. And, uh, and the issue of politics, not every, in some communities in Nigeria, still politics is being, people are running from politics, even not women, even men are running from, from politics. So women are very much vulnerable and exposed. That's why in the NNPP, we believe women are used as the cornerstone of our uh, yeah, political uh, program. And therefore, uh, from day one, definitely women will be at the forefront, not at the back, not at the sidelines. The, uh, not in the uh, other room, not in the kitchen. Well, I've been hearing that. I don't know what it means, actually. So even to pronounce it, I don't know how to pronounce <laughs> it. But I do know that for sure, the women are so significant. You cannot take them for granted. There is something that this party is doing different from all the other political parties. We have <coughs> the president has already in his own blueprint. Has we may not want to delve on that. I apologize. <laughs> no problem. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I must thank you, no Professor Rufai Alkali, yes, yes, okay. yes, for coming on the show and um, you know for like, enlightening. I so always feel privileged sitting close to a professor because I know that you are a fountain. No, as you are a fountain of knowledge. Uh, no, yes. I'm a student of history and uh -huh. a student of politics. Yes. Okay. All but right. next time. Maybe you're calling me now to uh, to, uh, to 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 uh, to 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 uh, advertise all the other candidates. Uh, is that what you want me to do? <laughs> no, just analysis. <laughs> but remember, Nigeria have the option, and the option in 2023 is Senator Musa Konkoso. Mm, all right, thank you very much. Yes, sir, yes, all right, so that you. was that is Professor Rufai Alkali, the national chairman of the NN. PP. PP. You better learn to say product very well. I have it very <laughs> well. I just it don't it want also to belong to us. I, no, I, do <laughs> <laughs> I do not want to make that mistake of pronouncing no, two it parties together. You will not. All right, no, okay. No. So um, <laughs> that's it. Um, so just stay tuned. We'll go on a short break. And mm. then something happened during the week, which we are going to be talking about. You wouldn't want to miss that topic. Please stay tuned. We'll be right back. <laughs>